So how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Unlimited Sports Inc. Podcast. Uh, two, two crucial games tonight, man. We're looking at Clips versus the Nuggets. Clippers versus Nuggets tonight, game seven. The two words that everybody loves to hear when it comes to playoff sports. Man, um, I haven't seen a team this resilient in a long time, man. A young, hungry team, very feisty. They're matching all the energy that the Clippers are coming out with, and their guys are stepping up when the time means the most. So to see them fight back from 3-1 twice and to already have won uh, back-to-back uh, game sevens, it's insane. This team is, is supremely resilient, and uh, they, they want to find a way to make it, man. I think it's a toss-up. I know everybody is going to say Clippers are going to, they're going to take it tonight. It's easy, set in stone, book it. I wouldn't say that. I would not say that. Um, guys, they, they got some wild cards, man. The Nuggets, if Jamal Murray plays like Jamal Murray can in the clutch, it's going to be a close game. He can put up 30 to 40. And if it's definitely needed, he's going to he's going to provide it. So I expect Jamal Murray to definitely put up his shots. He should have a game 30 to 40 tonight. But the key is Jokic and our guys going to our guys going to be in the right spot for him to play make. Because that man runs that offense. Me and one of my friends talked about it. He's a blend of um, I want to say about three. Sometimes you can even include a fourth big man all molded into one. Nikola Jokic is the closest thing that we've seen since the great Arvita Sabonis, a 7'3", most likely 300-pound guy who was already uh, towards the end of his prime, going towards the end of his career. But you saw his talent, his playmaking, his passing, his shooting touch, his post-arsenal. Post moves for days. Uh, he reminds me of him so much. Very crafty, great post passer, uh, great playmaker out the post. He reminds me of now one of my favorites of all time. You know, shout out to his Sambor shuffle shot. He's adding some dirk in his game, man. It's nice to see the little turnaround one leggers. And just the little flip shots. It's nice to see that he added that to his game. You don't have to be the most athletic. You can be very supremely, uh, fundamentally sound and just get to your spots, knock down your shots, man. That's what, that's what it's all about, especially game seven. He's going against a team that's smaller than he is. The only person they have for him is Zubots, and Zubots can't pick him up 94 feet. Use it to your advantage. Very proud of guys like Jeremy Grant knocking down shots. They're guys like Torrey Craig, 3 and D, uh, Paul Millsap, with those 12 points in that one quarter, he helped lead a comeback. I mean, it just goes on. This team is resilient. So I I don't see them just bowing out and just getting blown out tonight. Uh, The Clippers, it feels like all the pressure is really on them. I feel like the younger team and the Nuggets have already overachieved themselves. Uh, The Clippers, you guys are loaded with depth. um, And they're they're still finding it tough. Uh, Granted, you know, a first year team, but, you know, I I don't get it. PG acts like he's not a superstar when the clutch time shines. Kawhi Leonard, he's been, you know, he's been pretty much their most solid uh, mainstay this playoffs. Pat Bev, I mean, it's been crickets lately, really. He's he's starting he's starting to get that uh that overrated type of vibe from a lot of people, man. A lot of people. He's just running around making noise. And the guys are still dropping 30 and 40. But first team defense over Drew Holiday, man, that's a story for a different day. There's no way in hell Pat Bev is supposed to be first or second team, even if he was second team, over Drew Holiday. That is the most underrated player in the NBA by his peers. And even I see it. 
I saw a game myself where he went against the Cavs and he locked up Kevin Love in the post maybe three or four times. Their starting point guard. Telling you, man, that kid, supremely talented, and he's coming into his free agency soon. That guy deserves to go to a real championship contender. Because that's the type of player you get when you want to win. If I'm the Milwaukee Bucks, hey, if the Pelicans are looking to trade Drew Holiday or if they're willing to let him go, we are making a deal. That's the that's exactly what Milwaukee needs. A two way guy like that. That can hit his shots more consistently, more consistent than Bledsoe. But hey, it's tough, man. It's tough, but uh, he, Jokic, man, he reminds me of a uh, Sabonis. He reminds me a little bit of my boy Dirk when he hits his little one leggers and those shots like that, man. Uh, and it's almost like he has that mild manner, and it's like a Tim Duncan. No matter what it looks like, a flip shot, a floater, a turnaround hook, just hit it off glass to go in. He doesn't care what it looked like. Just get it done. Get it in there. Effective. Tim Duncan, the same way. His game was not, <laughs> majority of the time, uh, above the rim highlights and stuff that, that kids like to watch now. He was fundamentally sound to a T. His 15-foot mid-range shots off the glass. on, I mean, undefeated. Second to no one else in the post. Post moves for days, left or right. Up and unders. Pump fakes. Oh, my goodness. Footwork. A1. Guys like that, man. He reminds me of that when he does get a chance to create in the post for himself and put up flip shots and floaters. So, the kids, the kid is supremely talented, man. 25 years old. He's blessed to uh, even make it out from the second round where the Nuggets found him. And for, th- for that guy to be the center that's leading that organization, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing story. I will touch on the Nuggets more on uh, future episodes as well because um, they're one of the best drafting franchises in, I would probably say, within the past 10 years. If you look at the quality of their picks overall. Um, but we'll talk about that more different show. Um, other than that, it's an even match. The Clippers have depth. They have two-way guys. They got pretty much the bad boy Pistons type of team. Defensive, talk shit, get gritty. Um, but when it comes down to it, you have to be effective on both sides. And a mean face doesn't make a bucket. So guys got to step it up. My prediction for tonight? Hmm. It's tough. I know the favorite is the Clippers. I'm not sleeping on the Nuggets one bit. I will probably say it's a game that either comes down to the last few possessions or Clippers win by a close margin. I would say by three points. So, I mean, you guys can expect a close one. Um, Pay attention to the defensive side of the ball for the Nuggets. I want to see how do they stop the Clippers because we know the Clippers are known for their defense. But how are the Nuggets going to stay in? How are they going to protect the rim enough? Who's going to be that that defensive stopper for them? Will it be Millsap? Will it be Grant? Will it be Plumlee off the bench? Who's going to be the guy that gets them those quality stops? So that could be another determining factor. For the Clippers, they just need consistent shooting. Consistent shooting. Everything else is pretty much set in place for them to succeed. So they have no reason to lose. And blowing a 3-1 would be the icing on the cake. And I think they would probably want to reconstruct come next year. Uh, They probably would want to get a few more surefire pieces or see if they could possibly trade for even another star. So um, besides that, also got Celtics versus Heat game one. And this is a series I'm really looking forward to. Really looking forward to it. Two teams that mirror each other practically. 
Um, I mean, what more is there to say? When you look at both teams on paper, it looks like Boston has the upper hand. But uh, to anyone that may not be able to see it, their guys underperform. Uh, they underperform sometimes or it just feels like it's too much. It's too much uh, congestion pretty much with guys you could say are what three. They have three quality small forwards. You know what I mean? You got Jalen Brown. You got uh, Jason Tatum. Gordon Hayward's out. Then you got Kemba. He's a scorer who likes the ball in his hands mainly. So it's it's a lot. It's a lot of operation. And then usually the big man is just a guy who runs, jumps, cleans up misses, and tries to rim protect. And uh, Daniel Tice, like how he does. But uh, I don't know, man. This will really tell. This will really separate Jason Tatum from star to all star to superstar. Can you take this team to the finals now? Because if he takes them to the finals, now he's entering his superstar. His superstardom will have began once he takes the Celtics to uh, the NBA finals. All pieces are in place. I mean, it's the best team that that many draft picks that they've had and that much money can get you. I mean, they even had a, a hiccup along the way that they tried to make the best of, which was the Kyrie and Isaiah Thomas trade. But in the end, I mean, it was it was pretty much a lateral move. It didn't hurt the team in the long run. And I mean, all you really gave up was Colin Sexton. So, I mean, compare it to now. Who would you rather have, Colin Sexton or Kimball Walker? They came out ahead. They signed Kimball Walker last season. They still have flexibility, team flexibility. And future picks, they still have a few. They still have some uh, future pick rights to um, Memphis, I believe. And it was a couple other teams. I believe it was Sacramento or something like that uh, in the next coming years. And that would probably wrap up that treasure trove of picks that they've had since dating back to the Brooklyn Nets, man. That trade was such a heist. Oh, my goodness. But uh, I just feel like both teams, same level. Both teams are on the same level, man. They both have around the same size bigs, except one does does an all-around type of game, two-way player. Daniel Tice is more of your clean-up, rebound, rim-protecting type of uh, center. And then it's going to be an all-out battle between your, your guys in Duncan Robinson, sniper, Tyler Hero, sniper, Jay Crowder, two-way bulldog, that physical presence that you need gonna play small ball for and then of course you got Jimmy Butler who is it, it kind of seems like a de facto point guard most times or the de facto primary ball handler which is okay because he does a little bit of everything and he just knows how to lead he's hungry always he always wants to get better he wants to continue proving doubters wrong and the guy is 30 years old, leading a one or I guess now you could say a two all star team into the Eastern Conference Finals with a ton of guys who are in their second to third year or less in the league. That is amazing. They're scrappy. We know the Miami Heat way. They do it the right way. I mean, their discipline has gotten them this far. I don't see them laying down for the Celtics. Celtics are going to have to knock down their shots because the defense is going to be turned up. The sliders will be turned up all the way. They're going to defend. They're going to make it a close game. I Majority of these games, don't be surprised if it's around 110, 100 points, 90 points, like the authentic NBA playoff games. All these games of 130, 140, 150 points, man. Where is the defense? They don't let these guys play defense anymore. And that's why we're watching these ABA scores. 
and everybody's being praised like there's some type of God on the court. Anybody can put up those type of numbers when you're barely being touched or someone's so scared to defend you, they give you that much space. These stats are ballooned by today's game. And it's it's just the rules. They're ballooned by it. Guys like D'Antoni, come on. We've seen him dating back for years. Dating back for years that he's been coaching, since the Suns and all of that. He does not ever have a team that's hungry enough to play defense to win a championship, period. It's all offense. They don't care if the other team scores. Just run back and keep going. Go, go basketball. You will never win a championship that way. Ever. You have to want to defend. If I'm an NBA franchise, I would keep him as a great assistant coach for offense. If you wanted a great assistant coach for defense, you go get Mike Brown. Great at that. But as a head coach, terrible. Terrible player development. Terrible at getting any type of offensive system going around LeBron when he was in Cleveland. Defensively, top 10 in the league every single year, his teams. Knows the schemes that he likes to run, put guys in position to improve their defense and get better. But as a head coach player development, terrible. Definitely played a factor in Anthony Bennett coming out as a bus, even though when adversity hit, I'm being told, uh, especially even by David Griffin, I've seen a source post that when adversity hit, he gave up every single time. He just didn't want it enough, supposedly. So, I mean, but, you know, just to get back on that, man, it's it's stuff like that. You know, it's it's stuff like that. I don't understand how how you know what type of coach you're getting and you still pick that guy and he does the same exact thing he did at his prior destinations and you come up well short. It's like, you know, the puzzle you're getting and it's already done. So why would you want to deconstruct it and put it together hoping for a different outcome? I'm just saying. But uh, with these guys, man, they match up. They match up so similar. I see it going six, seven games. For my prediction, uh, personally, I want to see the Heat win. And I think they could do it in seven or six. Most likely seven. Um, But my prediction It's looking like it's looking like majority of people think it's going to be the Celtics. I think most people are thinking it's going to be the Celtics, but I'm never afraid to go against the grain. And I called last series as well, seeing the Miami Heat possibly making some noise and beating the Bucks as well. And I seen it. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I will. I'll have to go with the Miami Heat in seven for this series. I might get some blowback about it. Hey, I'm willing to stand on my words. I've been a basketball enthusiast. I've been watching the flow of this playoffs, especially without fans, that key factor, that key playoff feel, and it's a different game. It's a completely different game. I do think the Miami Heat will continue rolling both ways and just continue to capitalize off other teams' mistakes. Kimba, this is your time. You left Charlotte finally. You you finally got your bag. You went to a contender. This is everything you wanted. It's your time to step up. Jason Tatum, keep killing. Jalen Brown, keep killing. Much improved players. With Kyrie out the way this year, they show much improvement. Sucks not having Hayward for them, but... uh. Tice has been key for them. Smart has been key stepping up. Two-way guy. Um, They've even, you know, given a few spot minutes to some of their younger guys. So we'll see, man. We will see. But I ultimately think uh, the game one tonight, even though I think the Heat will take the series, game one tonight will probably be another close one. 
Celtics might get this first one. If the Heat gets this first one, it's Heat and six. That's just how I see that playing out. And for the Clippers, man, they might get this one by three. Or like I said, for sure, it's coming down to the last possessions. Uh, You got to capitalize on turnovers, on the other team's mistakes. And let's see how those two teams will do it. Um, Other than that, man, we're working on a whole bunch of other topics. I'm also working on the Vent Podcast, Air It Out, brought to you by Unlimited Sports Inc. Um, It's an open dialogue podcast, man. I had one of my friends on there and uh, he just got to, you know, got to air it out. He got to pretty much open up, get a few things off his chest. We got to talk about some funny, interesting topics, man. He got to sip his thing. I got to sip my brew and we just chop it up, man. We just had a good conversation. Uh, If anybody smokes or anything like that, if they want to do that, that's up to you. You know, we don't we don't discriminate against anything like that, but it's an open, chill environment and even mental health awareness wise, man, this is an outlet for people. We we want to know how you feel. OK, there's people out there who actually give a damn still. And I just happen to be one of them. So with my platform, uh, with the vent, you know, with. Unlimited Sports Inc. podcast, I want to give everybody an opportunity, a fair opportunity to be heard, to let their opinion be heard, and to speak about various topics. Everybody thinks differently about things, so I want to hear from somebody different. I want to learn more about the world, period. So this is what this platform is meant for. Anybody that wants to come on and be a guest, hey, just inbox me. We could set up a time date and just have a complete open, a complete open conversation, man. It's a good time. Open dialogue. We could talk about anything you want. If it's something bothering you personally and it's something that you want to get out there or a message, by all means, man, hit me up and you could definitely come on sometimes. Uh, like I said, you know, it's it's wide open, man, uh, for Unlimited Sports Inc. I definitely want to have more guests uh, of anybody else, uh, current or former pro, college or even high school athletes of any type of sport, really. Um, if you want to come on, come on. I would love to hear about your journey. I would love to hear where you headed. And hey, who knows, man? This 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 is a brotherhood. This sports thing is a brotherhood and this sports podcasting. Just itself, let alone the overall podcasting industry, is taking off. And I just want everybody to, everybody that is truly interested in sports or just have a have a great, you know, love for just overall, you know, life, uh, life positivity, you know, and getting better and learning how to overcome some of these things like anxiety and depression and. All types of stuff, man. I'm here for you. So, everybody stay in touch. This is the Unlimited Sports Inc. Podcast. As you always know, my shows are pretty random. But um, I do plan on having another episode of the Vent Podcast out by the end of the week. I will keep you guys updated on that. As always, people, let's stick together. Let's stick together. Let's enjoy these games tonight. Enjoy another night in with your family. Eat a good dinner. And let's decipher some playoff basketball. We are going into the conference finals after tonight. Officially. So enjoy the games, everybody. Stay tuned for the next Unlimited Sports Inc. podcast. Take it easy. Peace.